If you're looking for an easy appetizer or quick bite to serve to your unexpected guests or as an after school snack, then it's always nice to rely on your pantry and freezer. That's why I'm making for you today some frozen pot stickers with two interesting homemade dipping sauces, a hoisin lime sauce and a Korean gochujang vinaigrette. There's nothing quite like perfectly juicy, crispy, and chewy dumplings made even better with some spicy, sweet, and tangy sauces. So come on, grab a pan with a lid, and I'll show you how to make these. What's up, universe? Welcome back to my kitchen. And in case you're new here, I'm Julie Yoon. I'm a chef, I'm a mom, and for this season of our show, our focus is on some easy and yummy snacks that we can actually execute and film while our son, Lincoln, naps. And as a busy mom, you know it's no secret that I really do love relying on my freezer for some easy go-to meals and quick bites. So this video is sponsored by Ling Ling Asian Kitchen. They have a whole line of noodles and rice dishes in the frozen section of the grocery store. But today our focus is gonna be on some pot stickers. And I chose to do two different kinds. So I have the pork and vegetable and the chicken and vegetable. And they do come with their own savory dipping sausage, which I think is great. But you know, I have to add my Chef Julie Yoon flair to the mix and throw in a couple of my homemade ones myself. So we're gonna start off with a hoisin lime sauce. What you're gonna need is hoisin sauce, orange juice, a lime, and garlic. You wanna grab your hoisin sauce, which is pretty much like an Asian barbecue sauce, really. So it's nice and sweet and thick, and you're gonna use about a quarter cup. Um, oops, I think I went a little bit over a quarter, but that's okay. And then you're gonna just use a quarter cup of orange juice. It doesn't have to be fresh squeezed or anything by any means, but if you wanted to squeeze your own fresh orange, go for it. And then you're gonna have two cloves of garlic, finely minced. And then the last thing you're gonna need is a fresh lime. This is a huge lime, so I'm actually happy about that. Oh, fragrance of limes, right? It's like unbeatable. If you are a longtime viewer or follower of our blog, then this sauce might seem a little bit familiar to you. I originally made this sauce for my salmon wrapped in rice paper recipe, but I just thought it would be a really good and unique dipping sauce. It has the garlic and the lime. It's just like adds that fresh pop. That's it. So then all you're going to do is pop this into a microwave for about one minute until it just melts together. Let it cool to room temperature and set it aside. Oh my gosh, if you guys could smell the fragrance of this thing, it just, it makes your mouth salivate because it has like all of those notes that you want. Um, forget about dipping sauces, you can drink this. I mean, it's good on anything, truly. Moving on to our gochujang vinaigrette. What you're gonna need is gochujang, rice vinegar, sugar, soy sauce, sesame oil, olive oil, and garlic. And again, if you've been following us for a while, this might seem familiar as the sauce I use for my beef and barley bibimbap salad. So it's kind of like a little fusion twist on bibimbap, like a mixed rice bowl. But again, I thought it would be excellent as a dipping sauce. I have two tablespoons of gochujang. So gochujang is a Korean red pepper paste. They sell at the Asian grocery store. Some regular grocery stores have it now too. But if not, I can leave a link on Amazon down for you below so you know what I'm talking about. This sauce is spicy, but it's also sweet. To that, we're gonna add two tablespoons of rice vinegar. So let me just make sure it's unseasoned. To balance out that vinegar, you need a tablespoon of sugar. I like to add two tablespoons of soy sauce. To me, Gochujang is already seasoned, so sometimes people don't like to add extra salt to it, but to me, I think it needs it and also cuts the spiciness. I recently did that for a sauce for my dad because he can't eat that many spicy things and he thought that was a genius move. 
And then we have a tablespoon of sesame oil, which is obviously a classic taste. But here's an unusual twist. I also like to add a tablespoon of olive oil because it adds a different taste to it that's not as strong as sesame oil and also helps to make the sauce more mild. And then lastly, before we start mixing it together, I have two cloves of garlic. And because I'm not gonna be cooking the sauce or microwaving it like the other one, I'm gonna just grate it on my microplane or, oh snap, this always happens to me. I think this happened to me the last video I did this. <laughs> I'll have to check. Just grate it on the microplane so that it gets nice and fine and you won't have any big chunks of garlic when you bite into it or when you dip your dumplings. Clove number two. If you guys don't have a microplane, you need one in your life. I use this thing for everything. So we have a list of recommended kitchen tools on our blog, but we'll leave a link for you down below in the description box. Basically check our description box, it has everything in there. And then all you have to do is whisk it up. See, I just love simple sauces like this. This sauce, again, would be great on a rice bowl or anything else. So both sauces are diverse, so they're just good to know. Great. Set this aside, and then we're gonna head over to the stove and work on making our pot stickers. All right, so get yourself a pan with a lid. That's very important because you need it to steam and trap that moisture in because you're gonna use both oil and water. And then you're gonna grab yourself two tablespoons of vegetable or canola oil, and then you're just gonna add that and heat that up as well for about a minute. So I'm deciding to do the pork and vegetable ones. I might decide to do the chicken and vegetable ones later. And inside the package, does come with Ling Ling Kitchen's signature dipping sauce, and I saw that it is more like a soy sauce vinegar based sauce. So all you do is throw that in some hot water. I'll try that too. Straight from frozen, okay, you're gonna grab your dumplings and put them down carefully. If they can stand up, then that's better because that's traditional pot stickers, they're more like on the bottom. But if they don't, then just let them be. You wanna give yourself some space in the pan because as dumplings start to cook, they will swell a little bit. And then when they swell, they'll stick. You don't want them sticking together. Now you want to heat this up just to make sure that they have a chance to get brown, but they're not gonna get completely brown. That'll happen throughout the process. And because these are frozen, you know, if you just cook the outside, then the inside won't get hot and cooked. So you wanna use steam as well. The good thing about Ling Ling dumplings is that they're all natural, actually made in America, and they're from a recipe from their family-owned Asian restaurant that was over 20 years ago. And if you have a hard time finding these dumplings in your own grocery store like we did actually, then we got them from Amazon Fresh. And although Amazon Fresh isn't sponsoring this video, we'll leave a link for you down below if you wanna have a 30-day trial for free. That's what we signed up for too. The next step is that you wanna pour some water into the pan so that it covers the dumplings by, the, by about a third. And then you wanna quickly put on the lid so that the oil doesn't splatter all over you. Have your lid ready. And at this point, you can turn up your heat safely. So you're gonna go from about a moderate heat, like a medium, to about a medium high. Okay, so that's my time. Okay, I got it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so that's my timer for about seven minutes, but I was hovering very closely and just watching without moving the pan, without moving the dumplings, and without moving and opening the lid. Oh, look how plump and gorgeous they are, even for frozen dumplings, am I right? They did kind of like collapse into each other. I'm gonna just let the rest of the water evaporate with the lid off. As you can see, there was some brown spots on the bottom and some of them fell over to the flat side. And when I looked at the instructions, it does say to put them on the flat side because probably because they're frozen, they're hard to stand up on the bottom like traditional pot stickers if they are fresh. 
And because there's both the water and the oil in there, there's gonna be some crispness when the water evaporates. The dough looks so soft and chewy. I can imagine that these will be really delicious. All right, the water's almost evaporated and pot stickers are called pot stickers for a reason. They get pretty stuck on there, but sometimes if they're very stubborn and stuck, it's because they still need to go just a little bit longer. All right. I think that looks pretty good. So we're just gonna plate it up and give it a taste. So are you excited to try out your trio of sauces? Oh, I am. <laughs> and two different dumplings. Mm -hmm. So over here we have the chicken and mm -hmm. vegetable, yep. and then over here we have the pork and vegetable. So we'll see if there's a difference, which one we like better. This is our, actually our first time trying it yeah. on camera for you guys. So we just knew we trusted the company. We knew what they would offer. We liked that it was all natural and stuff. So mm -hmm. we were like, I think it'll be good. Yeah. So we agreed to it. So, okay, right here we have the dipping sauce that came with the Ling Ling Asian Kitchen dumplings. Um, so it's, I think, a soy sauce vinegar base, maybe some sweetness. This is my hoisan lime sauce, and this is the Korean gochujang vinaigrette. You can do like multiple sauces on each dumpling, otherwise it'll be like so full of dumplings. Chicken. Mm-hmm. Mmm. I'm surprised at how meaty it is. Yeah, that's what was the first thing that came to my mind. I don't know why that's so shocking, but... The filling is very hearty. Um, I love the, the chewiness of the wrapper too, right? Mm -hmm. So this was a typical like soy sauce vinegar. So we'll try it with the hoisin lime. Whoa, mm -hmm. that completely changes the taste of it. Mm -hmm. Wow, I love that sharp lime. Like my eyes are bugging out. <laughs> uh -huh, it's kind of sweet in there. Yeah, sweet and the lime. Mm -hmm, the lime. You know what this tastes like? Cause do you ever have those like chicken lettuce wraps? you know, at the restaurant? Yeah. It tastes like that because that's the kind of sauce that would be on there with the chicken. Third and last, this one has a spicier kick. Mmm, I like that heat. I think it's a good combination. Yeah, it's a perfect little I really like that. I do too. And I feel like the, um, the gochujang is not as spicy um, because it's dulled down by all those other flavors. It's definitely not too hard to handle. I felt like this one is the like plain salty. This one has a more sweet but tangy, and this one has like a mild spiciness. Are you trying the pork? I am trying the pork. I couldn't wait for <laughs> you. <laughs> for me to stop talking. <laughs> I want to try it without anything first. Mm. This is meaty as well. Mm -hmm. That definitely could taste the pork. Mm. But for me personally, I tend to like dumplings with pork in it better than the ones with chicken anyway because I feel like there's more fat and there's more flavor so I don't know personally I would probably go for the pork me too <clears throat> but the chicken was just as good yeah I was surprised like I said like you said the meatiness definitely took me a little bit of a surprise what's your favorite dipping sauce probably the hoisin sauce would be my favorite why it has a little bit of a sweet kick to it that I like because I'm a sweet tooth, so... True. So, it's funny because I thought we were just going to taste it, but we're like straight up eating it. <laughs> I love the crispiness on the one side, mm -hmm. being pot sticker, yep. but then the dimension of it being soft on the other side. I would definitely serve this to my guests or I would love for Lincoln to eat this as an after school snack. Um, if he went to school, <laughs> if he was <laughs> older. <laughs> well... Thanks so much to Ling Ling Asian Kitchen for sponsoring this video and for opening our eyes to the world of your magical dumplings. Mm. So the links to the written recipes for all the ingredients, measurements, amounts will be linked down below in our description box. So go check that out on chefjulian.com and as well as any of the kitchen tools or maybe even ingredients that may, might be harder to find. We'll try to help you out there too. Mm -hmm. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to let us know by pushing like. Leave a comment down below, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell for notifications so that you know every time we upload a new video. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.
I like how we stopped rolling, but we're still eating. <laughs> it's all good. It is. <laughs>